going to check out downtown Holland. I'm going to check out this Windmill Island Gardens as well. Welcome. I see a windmill in the distance. I want to go inside. Oh, you want to go check out a museum? Somewhere cool? <laughs> no, I want to go inside the windmill. Oh, you want to go inside the windmill? So I had to come back to the van to drop off the GoPro because you can't go pro with a GoPro when it won't shut off. There you are. The flowers are still real pretty this year for the end of the year. Wouldn't you say? Oh, look how gorgeous that is. I want to hear it. Yeah, it does play. I'm Okay, here's the windmill. That if you look at the blades, you can still see the bullet holes that were left in it when they were uh, in the World War II. Yeah, it was a used. This windmill was used as a lookout in the Netherlands during World War II. If you look closely, you can still see them. So yeah, so oh yeah, it's really cool. So this was moved. This windmill was originally in the Netherlands and it was moved. How can you imagine moving this sucker? Wow. Yeah, can you imagine moving this? Freaking amazing. Ooh. This place is a nice place to come for a walk and see some different stuff on your walk and learn some stuff. Oh, look at Let's go in here and see what it's about. It's a little gift shop. No, Harry Vanna brought much her way. Her kids have Harry Vanna friends and teachers. Yes, we are playing that big one. Hello, folks. Welcome. I'll quick tell a story here about the war. I don't know if she, I'm no. sure she did enough there, but they were asking about the bullet holes. You see that big beam laying out there. It's full of bullet holes. On the third floor, there's a nameplate. But one of the stories that's in our book is that Two young men, they were part of the resistance in the Netherlands, of course, and they just freed a little Jewish boy. And they came upon this windmill in the town of Bengal, broke the window, climbed to the very top, 16 and 17 year old guys, and they laid up there and their life was spared. Later on in life, one of those gentlemen moved to Indiana, and when he heard that this one windmill was moved here to Holland, Michigan, he came here with his children and grandchildren and took them up there and showed him where he had spent the night. So, wow. Pretty emotional. We were able to get his name, phone number, and he did an interview for us and so forth. It's all written down. And it's, and it's kind of cool. I love to tell the story because I think it ties the yes. old windmill in with the one movie. You know? I'm sure there's many stories that we we'll probably tell because a lot of
This level you see here, like a wooden shoe factory that was running from 1926 to 1999. Too big. <laughs> Too big. Still too big. <sighs> I have small feet. <sighs> mm. Okay. Over here is tools for what? What do they do with these tools? I'm not sure if this is for the. Love history. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a different floor storage container. These are part of the windmill's long history dating back to the middle 18th century. Right. So it was all the stuff they used here. We are definitely getting over again. Oh. We're on the level five. They have a brake beam on it. Powerful stuff. That was amazing. Glad we went. I'm glad we came again <sighs> out here <sighs> to be able to see it. I'm glad I conned him into it. <laughs> huh? Um, I know. Want to get on? Children only. Oh. I can pretend. You're, you're high enough. <laughs> I can pretend I'm a kid. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm okay. <sighs> I know, I'm joking. I hope you enjoyed our tour of Muskegon and of Holland, Michigan. It's now time to race against the storm to our next location. And who knows where that'll be. You're just going to have to stay tuned and find out. All right. Tina's the Outsider is out. <laughs>